Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to share with you three easy slow cooker meals that you can make in your crock pot or other slow cooker. The first recipe that we're going to make is a slow cooker pot roast. This is actually an instant pot recipe that I adapted for this purpose and I will link all the original recipes in the description box below for your reference. So for this recipe, I'm going to be using the Kasori multi-cooker. This is actually a slow cooker and it also sautés and browns and boils and cooks yogurt, which is really awesome. Uh, so for this recipe, I'm going to be using some carrots as well as some dry red wine. This happens to be from Arden Creek. I'm also going to need some minced garlic, some fish sauce, some salt and pepper and olive oil, as well as some thick cut sliced onion. I also have some fresh rosemary, as well as some dried thyme for this recipe. The other thing that you're going to need is a large cut of beef. I have a rump roast, but you could also use a chuck roast. The first thing I'm going to do is just set the Kasori multi-cooker to brown and then I'm going to turn the temperature all the way up and push start. I really love this multi-cooker because it gives you the ability to brown your food as well as slow cook it. So you can see here that I'm going to start out by just putting some olive oil in my multi-cooker and adding the thick cut onion and then I'm just going to brown those just a little bit until they get nice and golden brown in some olive oil. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add my carrots. I've just peeled these carrots and chopped them roughly. They're actually going to cook with the roast, so you don't need to cut them too small because they'll be slow cooking for quite a while. So once those are browned, you can go ahead and remove them into a bowl and set them aside. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and season my roast. Like I said, this is a rump roast, but you could also use a chuck or an arm roast as well. So I'm just seasoning that with some salt and pepper. And then my multi-cooker is set to brown, and so I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. And then I will go ahead and add the beef. So what you want to do with the beef is just to make sure that it is browned on all sides. So I'm just going to continue turning that on all sides until it is browned. Um, this beef actually was probably still a little bit frozen in the middle and that's fine. It's going to cook in the slow cooker for 8 to 10 hours and so it should be tender and cooked through by the time you are finished. Okay, so once your beef is browned, you're gonna go ahead and add the rest of your ingredients. So I'm adding some red wine along with some uh, minced garlic. I'm also going to add some beef broth as well as some seasonings and fish sauce and Worcestershire sauce as well as some rosemary and thyme. When all the seasonings are in, I'm going to go ahead and add the carrots and the onions back in and then I will put on the lid. I ended up cooking this roast for about 8 hours on the low setting and thought that it needed some more time. And so at the end of that, I just added a couple more minutes on the high setting, which is fine. You know, this cut of roast was really lean. Um, a rump roast tends to be really lean and so you might need to cook it a little bit more but in the end it turned out fine just use your judgment and cook it until you think that it is done and tender so once it was finished cooking you can see here I have the roast in the pot along with the broth and then the carrots and onions are in there as well so what I want to do is just basically take out all of the solids from the multi-cooker because I'm going to make a gravy in there. And so I'm just going to remove the roast and all of the onions and carrots. And then I will actually just let those rest. So anytime you cook a large cut of meat like that, you want to make sure you let it rest before you slice it. So I'm just basically putting all those things on a platter and then I will cover it with aluminum foil and let it rest for about half an hour while I make the rest of the uh, dinner. 
So for this gravy recipe, I'm basically just going to leave the broth in there. It wasn't super greasy, so I didn't feel like I needed to strain it out. And then I'm just going to set the multi-cooker to boil. And to make the gravy, you could alternatively use butter and flour, but I think it's easier for a gravy like this just to use a little bit of cornstarch. So I just poured in there some cold water whisked with a few tablespoons of cornstarch, and then I'm just whisking that into the hot broth. You can see that it's bubbling up there, and as soon as that comes to a boil, it will thicken up. I needed to add some salt as well as a little bit more garlic powder and then I also ended up after I tasted it I added some Worcestershire sauce as well. The thing with gravy is that you can't be sure how it's going to taste so you just kind of have to keep adding seasonings and tasting it until uh, it is to your liking. Okay so once the gravy is done I'm just going to go ahead and add the roast back to the pot. And I'm going to go ahead and cover that and let it sit for a few minutes until I finally slice it up. So you can see here that I have put the meat on a cutting board and sliced it as thin as I can with a sharp knife. Uh, it turned out really good. I really liked this recipe. I think that the unique combination of ingredients added something to it. So I just served it with some mashed potatoes and the carrots and the onions and I made some rolls with it as well. So I definitely recommend this recipe and I will for sure be making it again. So the next recipe that I'm going to show you is some slow cooker lettuce wraps. The original recipe was to use ground chicken, but I could not find it in my store so I ended up substituting ground turkey and it worked out fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set my Kasori multi cooker to brown and I'm going to turn the temperature up as high as I can because I'm going to brown the veggies and the ground turkey and I want to make sure it gets nice and cooked. So for this recipe I'm going to need some olive oil, some sesame oil, some soy sauce, some rice vinegar, some hoisin sauce, as well as some ground black pepper. I'm going to need two pounds of ground turkey or chicken, as well as some minced garlic and minced ginger. I've also chopped up a red pepper and a red onion, and then I'm also going to need some water chestnuts and some salt. So to get started with this recipe, I'm just going to add some olive oil to the bottom of the multi-cooker, and then I will go ahead and saute the peppers and onions along with the garlic and ginger until it is nice and softened. So once the veggies are cooked, you can go ahead and add the meat. Like I said, I'm using ground turkey, and so I'm just going to add two pounds of that to the multi-cooker. And then I have this um, meat chopper from Pampered Chef that I really love to chop up ground meats, and so I'm just using that to get the meat as fine as I can. And I also went ahead and seasoned it with some salt and pepper as well. Okay, so after the meat is cooked, you can go ahead and add your chopped water chestnuts as well as your rice vinegar, your sesame oil, and go ahead and give that a good stir until it is well combined. You can also add your soy sauce as well as your hoisin sauce. And then after all of the ingredients are incorporated, you just want to stir that really well. And then you're going to end up slow cooking that to let the flavors uh, combine together. So I just added a little bit of salt to that, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. I tasted it and I thought it needed a little bit more vinegar, so I went ahead and added it at this time as well.
Okay, so I'm just going to put the lid on and then I'm going to set the multi-cooker on high and that automatically sets to 204 degrees Fahrenheit, which is fine. And then the recipe shows to cook it on high for an hour and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and set the timer to an hour and a half. And then once that is done, I will go ahead and plate it up on some lettuce wraps. This ended up turning out really great. It ended up making a lot and so I had some extra that I went ahead and freezed for a later use. But I would totally recommend this recipe. It uh, was really good and it's a really healthy low carb option if you are looking for that as well. So what I served this with is just some iceberg lettuce that I had washed up and kept whole in leaves. And then I had some chicken pot stickers as well as some egg rolls as well. So that was a really good dinner and I will definitely be making that again. So the last recipe that we are going to cook is some slow cooker chicken parm. Uh, this is a recipe that I found online and I wanted to try out because I thought it looked really good. So what you'll need for this recipe is some olive oil, some shredded mozzarella cheese, I'm using the Kraft Creamy Melt, as well as a pound of dried pasta. This is just rigatoni, but you can use any shape that you want. You'll also need some salt and pepper and some diced onion, as well as two large cans of crushed tomatoes. That will be the sauce. And then there is a mixture of herbs you'll be using, so I went ahead and put those all into a bowl. And then you'll also need a pound of chicken breast strips as well as some Parmesan cheese and some fresh parsley. So to get started with this meal, you're going to go ahead and put your multi-cooker on saute and then add some olive oil and you'll basically be making the tomato sauce first and then simmering the chicken in that. So first you'll wanna add your chopped onion to the olive oil and let that soften as well as add the chopped garlic as well. Once that is nice and softened up, you will actually go ahead and add your herbs. So this is a mixture of dried basil, oregano, parsley, and red pepper flakes. I just went ahead and combined it so it would be easier to film. But sauteing the herbs really gives it a depth of flavor. And so I would definitely recommend that step. And then you will also go ahead and add the two 28 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes. And this will basically be your marinara sauce. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. I think this really turned out well. I have never uh, tried this recipe before and so I would definitely make it again. But once you get your marinara sauce in the slow cooker, you wanna go ahead and turn your heat up a little bit just to uh, let the chicken bubble up for a second. I'm using some boneless, skinless chicken breast strips and I'm just gonna nestle those, nestle those down there in the sauce and then I will go ahead and set my slow cooker. So what I'm setting this for is on high for four hours. That turns out to 204 degrees and this ended up working out perfectly. So the chicken was perfectly cooked nice and tender and I was able to shred it up in the sauce. And so to finish this recipe, once the chicken is done simmering in the tomato sauce, you just wanna cook some noodles and add it in there. So I'm just adding some cooked rigatoni that I had boiled on the stove top. At first it will look like you have way too much sauce for your pasta, but the pasta will absorb the sauce. And so you wanna keep that in mind and just stir it around, go ahead and um, shred up your chicken and add some Parmesan cheese. And then the last step is just to add some mozzarella cheese on the top and let that melt. So this was actually a really good dish. If I had to choose, this would probably be my most favorite dish out of the bunch. So I went ahead and served this with some salad and some garlic bread. So thanks so much for watching and thanks to Kasori for sending me this multi-cooker for the video. If you're interested in checking out this multi-cooker, I will leave a link in the description box below and I would definitely recommend it if you are looking for a new slow cooker. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.